Hey everyone, this is Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. This is your late weekend upload of the Pocket Change Market Report for March 24th, 2024. I want to thank you guys for coming on board to check how the market's doing on a lot of the varieties and errors that you have been finding out there in the wild today. Now, in the wild, what does that mean? It means that you find these coins going through Pocket Change. Coin roll hunting is another big way that you could encounter some of these rare and valuable finds. But also keep in mind, if you go on to eBay, maybe there is a coin that you could cherry pick that hasn't been attributed or diagnosed as either a variety and error that you could pick up on the cheap. You could uh, check out your local coin shops, a show. There's been a lot of coin shows here recently. Another great way to take advantage of some of the coins that generally dealers probably don't care too much about. You go out there, find these things at a very minimal cost, add them to your collection, or do what I like to do, one of my favorites. Go ahead and resell these coins for big profits. And the market has been absolutely phenomenal. We are getting very close to the month of April. Spring is here. Um, the hobby is at its pinnacle. It's a lot of fun right now. Brand new 2024 coins have hit circulation. There's a lot going on right now. And I would encourage each and every single one of you at some point to take part in what's going on here. We're kind of like in this evolution of the hobby where a lot of people, instead of going to coin shows and paying a lot of money for coins that maybe they can't afford to possibly find some of their riches, just by untapping what's out there at face value. Um, a few little ground rules I like to cover. First of all, you know, we don't talk about graded coins. That, that's always something that comes up um, with a lot of my audience. Hey, how do I grade this or how do I grade that? I found something pretty neat. How do I grade it? Um, and I'm here to tell you, as long as you know what you have, you don't need to grade anything. About 99% of the errors and varieties that exist out there today in the wild, they're already well known. People know what they are. Therefore, you don't need to grade them. Uh, you're going to keep money in your pocket. That's always important if you're a reseller. Um, but, you know, it's, it's going to be one of those things that's going to help you educationally understand the fundamentals of what a variety and error is and why you don't need to grade these. Another point that I like to bring up, also is that we use 100% the original photos from each and every single listing. So these sellers, you're going to get a wide array of different photography lessons that they have employed in their listings. You're going to get the, some of the best and also some of the worst um, photos. And I'm happy to say that the bar is set really low. If you're struggling to take good quality photos of your coins or paper money, then look at this video. And you're going to see exactly what you need to do. Uh, you might even get a little photography lesson as a result of this video, which I like to point out a few things here and there. Um, so before we jump into the coins for this weekend, I also want to uh, bring up my whatnot calendar of events. I'm a prolific seller on the platform. In addition to eBay, uh, I use both of them. They supplement each other. Uh, but whatnot has been kind of like my go-to here lately. Uh, I have two great shows this week. We have the Spring Forward Coin Showcase, which is on Tuesday, March 26th, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. If you're looking for high-quality, inexpensive coins that you could add to your collection and feel great about doing so, we have that coming up here in a few days. But let's not forget, Friday... It's our biggest day of the week, you know, right before the weekend, we're going to have another big show. My biggest shows are on Friday, so why not take advantage of that? We have the end of month spring cleaning auction. $1 starts on, starts on every single auction. Nothing is going to be held back. Whatever they sell for, they sell for. And that's on Friday, March 29th, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. I hope to see you guys there. And if you're brand new, go ahead and sign up for the, on the platform. If you use my referral link down below in the description box, then you can earn yourself $15 in usable credit right away toward any purchase. So I hope to see you guys there either on Tuesday or Friday. The shows have been banging lately, 
and we, we're going to have more and more inventory as we continue on throughout the summer. All right, let's go ahead and check out some of these premier pieces that have sold on eBay in the last 24 to 36 hours, starting out with this incredible coin. It's a 1967 Lincoln Memorial set. This one is double struck. Okay, you can see it a lot better on the obverse. Uh, it's a, this is simply one of those incredible coins that you don't see too often. Now, this particular example right here, uh, the seller had mentioned that it was struck in collar. You know, that might be the case, but there was also a little bit of a shift here. The collar, I would say, probably malfunctioned um, at some point, thereby creating this event that you see here. Uh, but you could see the double profile of Lincoln. Uh, you could also see the first doubled letters of Liberty as well. You could see the secondary interior rim and also a sliver of Lincoln's bust at the very bottom there. Um, now, we don't have much in the way of doubling or double struck type of nature on the reverse on this particular one. Uh, so the, this this one probably the secondary strike was as a result of a misaligned obverse die. So there was some shift in that obverse die before the second strike did occur. Uh, this one right here captured the attention of a lot of error aficionados. This one ended up selling for $455, and that's with seven total bids. This is our most recent sale out of every coin on the list, and I'm happy to bring this one up. The next lot that we have here is going to be a lot of four Lincoln wheat sets. Uh, this is what they call the lamination or planchet flaw grouping. Uh, there's two, actually the, the dates, they, they're going to fool you a little bit. There are two 1911s, very tough dates in their own right, but also a pair of 1915s Lincoln wheat sets. Now you'll look at each coin and you're going to see either a lamination peel or some side of some sort of planchet defect or strike through. Um, this is quite the intriguing lot uh, to have <clears throat> two of the same date times two with with the same similar type of mint errors on there is quite phenomenal um now the four coins that you see here did sell for 53 dollars and 50 cents and that's with 27 bits so again there was a lot of eyeballs here on these uh now customarily laminations and various planchet flaws are kind of low on the totem pole as far as mint errors are concerned and when you combine that with relatively scarce dates of coins it may actually detract from the overall desirability of the coins. But in this particular case, um, with a sales price of roughly $13 per coin, there's not a whole lot of gambling going on here. You could easily buy these four coins, sell them individually, and possibly double your money. The coins all look to be in very nice shape. And again, they are very tougher dates. So the lot, again, sold for $53.50, and that's with 27 bits. The next one that we have here is actually a very common date for off-center and broad straw coins. Our favorite out-of-collar U.S. Mint error type of events <clears throat> can be found um, pretty plentifully between 1998 and 2001. We have this one here that struck off-center by about 10%. Um, the off-center struck coins are traditionally collected by date. So you're going to have date collectors looking like a, for a really good example for each date with the same type of error. Um, and as long as it shows a full readable date and mint mark, you're in. Um, it's going to sell inc incredibly well. This one sold for $17.04 and that's with 10 bids. Very active. The next one that we have here is a 1992 P Washington Quarter. It's got a very deep, dark kind of gray patina to it. <clears throat> Almost has like an antique look to it. It could possibly have been in the ground for a while. It's kind of hard to say. <clears throat> it, it certainly has that look like it's been dug out of the ground. Uh, it's got very porous textured surfaces. Um, but you know, what really stands out on this one is the coin looks slightly off center and that's, you know, that's probably what happened here is a partial tilted collar, uh, which gives it that off center appearance to it, which means that the collar that keeps the coin in place during the strike was actually either tilted or completely missing altogether. 
So this one right here is sold for $5.50 with 8 bids. While it doesn't seem like a whole lot of money, please do keep in mind that that is over 20 times face value. You know, one quarter turns into all of a sudden 20 quarters when you look at it this way. The next one that we have here, pretty neat one. This is a 1972 Eisenhower dollar. Okay, this one right here is uh, a misaligned dice error. As you can tell on the front of the coin or the obverse, it looks off center. But when you look at the reverse of the coin, it's perfectly well struck centered. Um, so there is a little bit of a uh, misaligned die occurrence here where that obverse die was slightly loose a little bit shaken so it did strike the coin at least that one side would be just slightly off center so any sort of mint errors on the bigger denomination coins like dollars and 50 cent pieces are always more desirable and they tend to sell for a higher amount of money on the market today this particular one right here is sold for 42 dollars and 15 cents with four total bits and if you compare this with say a jefferson nickel or a washington quarter of the same error type those coins traditionally sell for about five to ten dollars so you begin to see kind of like that difference between those coins and one like this where we just don't see a lot of them uh, the next one that we have here is the 1966 Roosevelt dime. You're going to notice that there's a little bit of an edge that's been chewed off here. They call this a clip. Uh, it's actually a very shallow rim clip on this one. Slightly curved. Um, the coin is in fantastic shape, but keep in mind, this is a much earlier date of Roosevelt dime. It also shows uh, some pretty significant, very, very strong deteriorated dies and that's made especially enhanced by what the strike looks like on the reverse which is quite weak um, now this is a very common error you could find these on a lot of dates of coinage today this particular one right here sold for nine dollars and 49 cents and that's with six bits uh, here's another one right here, 1968S Lincoln Memorial Set. Now, this time, this one has three clips on there. Now, there are two that are quite prominent on there, but if you look at the three o'clock position on the obverse of the coin, you'll see another very shallow clip, okay? So, um, finding one, quite common. Finding two clips on the same coin can be a little bit difficult. It's like on the kind of moderate scale for rarity, but finding three that one's especially tough. Uh, and this one, as a result, sold for $20.50 with nine bids. Again, not too bad for an incredibly common mint error. All right, so this was the talk of the town last year, and it's continuing on today. 2023 Lincoln Shield Set. This is the aforementioned what they call the Extra V Variety. Um, people were buying these in droves when they first came out. Um, turns out that, you know, it became such a legitimate thing in the market last year that grading companies like NGC, Annex, PCGS, they're all grading these with the Extra V uh, attribution on there. And it's been incredibly hot. So people are continuing on that here a year later in 2024. Uh, but only the caveat is they're looking for high premium non-graded examples that they could still send off to a grading company in the hopes that they could cash in really big. And this one you know, looks to be a pretty good candidate. Um, so we need to be at a mid-state 65, which this one I would say at its minimum should be a 65. Uh, 66, 67 will get you only more money in the market. Um, this particular one, again, you're going to look for that little V notch next to Victor David Brenner's initials at the base of Lincoln's bust. That's the uh, the, the thing to look for, uh, the, big, uh, the, the big variety. Uh, this one was attributed by one of the renowned error, uh, error people in the field, Mike Diamond. And that's the big reason why that these greedy companies are following suit with attributing this as a variety. All right. So this one right here ended up selling for $94 with 36 bids. Um, that's one of the more non-graded, raw, just incredibly crazy market sales I have seen in probably about six months. 
Um, we usually don't see them up this high. They tend to sell for between $30 and $50, even one that's as nice as this. Um, but, you know, whoever bought this or the number of people that did want it, they were awfully confident that this one will grade out really high by a grading company. Uh, the next one that we have here, well, another one of those common date off-center coins, 1999. This time, this one is off-center by about 15%. Um, keep in mind that a lot of these were discovered in mint sewn bags from the Fed Reserve, and um, th there are no shortage of this date. This particular one, ladies and gentlemen, sold for $22.54, and that's with eight total bids. And uh, of course, the older coins always draw some sort of attention. If you have the ability to cherry pick through some of the older stuff, there is a dog's dish of various errors and varieties that you can look for here. This is an 1852 braided hair um, with beads, uh, large scent. Okay, this is what a one cent coin used to look like long before the Lincoln cent even existed. Um, back then, this was this coin had exactly one cent worth of copper, and that's why they were so big. Uh, now, this particular one is variety N17. Not particularly sure what that variety is. Uh, it's a Newcomb variety based off of dye pairings. But most importantly, what drew the seller about this coin is the misaligned dyes, which, you know, I hate to break it to you guys, on the much older coins, they're really quite common. Like, if you look at this example, the obverse, the front of the coin, looks a little bit off-center compared to the reverse uh, so as a result, this one did sell for $39.78, and that's with 21 total bids. All right, we have finally got to our first piece of paper money. Look at this thing. This is a 1958 $10 bill. Uh, this one was pitched and promoted by its seller as being a misaligned uh, sheet issue here. Uh, you can see the overprint, and it is a star note, by the way. You can see the overprint looks like it's shifted to the right a little bit. The green uh, district seal is not centered right above the 10 there. Um, and, you know, on something like this, this is quite minor. Uh, we can see that there is a really, really thick white margin there on the right side where it's very thin on the other. When we look at the reverse of the note, you can see the same thing here as well. Uh, so the sheet was just overall misaligned. It was probably miscut a little bit too. This one right here ended up selling for $75.87, and that's with 29 bits. Again, very attractive note. Uh, cuds are king, and we have yet again another one, this time on a 1982 large date Lincoln Memorial set. Uh, this looks to be a copper, although, you know, a copper plated zinc composition of the same year and size of variety of date also does exist. Uh, this one has a, uh, a cud right at the base of Lincoln's bust, as you can see right there. Um, this occurs when, uh, just through general wear and tear, a piece of the die cracks and falls out, all right? That's something that happens quite frequently, even by today's standards, and um, it's inescapable, right? But when a coin is struck with that empty piece of the die missing, you know, it just leads to some pretty incredible results. All that metal flow will go into that empty cavity and create that large blobbed anomaly that you see here on this one. Uh, so this one right here did sell for $30.54. Um, it's a smaller size cud, but then again, when we look at it compared to the price it sold for, um, it's on par to the current sales of a lot of other similar coins. Uh, here's a nice early date of dime. This is a 1916 Mercury dime. It's actually in really nice shape. Um, the photos particularly are pretty good, but they look to be quite a bit drowned out by a lot of light. All right, so there's a white balance issue here. If you're going to take a photo of this, don't make it so bright to where it's going to give it an artificial look. We don't know if the coin's been cleaned or if there's something else hiding on this one. It does appear to have full bands on the reverts, which is a huge plus. But 1916 Phillies are generally well known for that. Uh, so this one right here was pitched as being a strike through. It could possibly be what's on that neck area. There might have been a piece of grease, it might have been a little string or something 
um, a metal shaving that was on the die prior to the strike of this coin. Otherwise, it's a pretty decent looking type coin altogether. This one sold for $37 here in the last day. And uh, if not for nothing, you know, this person got a really nice looking type coin or just a nice high-end mercury die. Not the greatest pictures. This one is uh, quite a bit out of focus. It's a 1937 D Buffalo Nickel. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, indeed, a three-legged buffalo. Uh, now, from what we can see on these photos, the coin looks to be in really nice shape. Uh, however, this one does have a mint error that actually detracts a little bit from the coin um, and its value. And that's going to be a very shallow rim clip, a sheet clip that's at right about 4 o'clock on the obverse there. And you can actually see it on reverse right on the buffalo's tail. Uh, when we look at it up close with these photos, you can see that there's a lot of dye deterioration. It looks correct. Uh, but you just got to heed caution. You got to make sure that the pictures you're looking at on a very expensive coin are going to give you all the information you need. This could very well be a very good fake uh, because this particular uh, variety uh, has been counterfeited for many decades, my friends. Um, so when you hear that this one sold for $1,450, there needs to be quite a bit of reassurance. If anything, you got to make sure that you're, um, you have the ability to get your money back if you decide to do a return, um, because that's going to be an important thing. And again, I've seen quite a few counterfeited three-legged buffaloes from 37D, and you don't want to keep them. Uh, the next one that we have here is actually a neat one. I actually covered this one way long ago. It's like been five, six years ago. Uh, and a few others have talked about it as well. This is the 2018 Michigan Pictured Rocks National Park Order. This is uh, one of the first states where we saw a pretty significant obverse doubled die variety. This is actually DDO number one for the date. And uh, when we look up close at the motto, In God We Trust, that tells the whole story. You see a lot of stretching, a lot of distortion of all the letters in the motto here. So this one right here sold for $6.62. Um, they're actually quite common. Uh, and that's the big reason why that the pricing has suppressed quite a bit over the years on this one. I remember back in 2018 and 19, these used to sell pretty regularly for between $40 and $50. And we're a long ways from there. All right. And this coin is actually in particularly good shape too. The next one that we have here is actually a really neat one. It's a 1981 P Washington quarter, but from looking at it, you wouldn't think it's anything special, right? Um, now, the person that owned it did probably notice that it weighed a little bit light in their hand. Maybe the coin was a little bit thinner than normal. Um, and that definitely warrants some extra investigative work. And that's what the seller did. So in this particular case, um, he did weigh it and he did compare uh, the thickness to other coins like it. So this is what the edge looked like. It's a copper nickel clad. You can see the copper um, layer in there as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but most telling is going to be the weight. So you have a normal wash and quarter that weighs 5.7 grams on the left. And this particular example that was sold weighed 4.78 grams. So about um, 0.7 grams lighter than what it should be. Um, so they have determined that this one was uh, struck on a very rolled thin planchet. Okay, so when the planchets, before they are punched out, uh, they were in what they call a strip. A long strip of material. Um, and that, that strip was going to have planchets punched out of them. All right. They use blanking dies to punch out the planchets and then they go through an upsetting mill to produce the, uh, the rims on there, or at least the beginning stages of them. Um, so, you know, there's always that chance that a very thin area of that strip was also going to be affected as well with planchets. And sure enough, this was one of them here. So this particular coin ended up selling for $13.50. They're not wildly expensive, but when you could obtain $10 to $15 for every one that you do find, I mean, that's a pretty big win right there. I would certainly take advantage of that. Uh, pretty neat one here. This is the 1878 
S. Morgan Dollar, a very tough date. It's a mint error, but where it came from is even more incredible. Now, if you look at the obverse face, there's that thing coming out of Lady Liberty's nose. That is actually a lamination. That's what a lamination looks like on a silver coin. It's going to be dark in color. Uh, but aside from that, there's plenty of like, you know, old toning all throughout the obverse and reverse of the coin. Uh, but where this coin came from was actually a promo piece from the American Savings Bank, uh, which is really cool. It came encased in this holder and the coin was sitting in a cardboard advertising piece. Uh, and because of that, uh, the way it toned, I would attribute that to be from the cardboard piece as, uh, you know, acid free and paper really did not exist back 70, 80 years ago. Um, so in this particular case, this is like a total package here. You have the mint error, you have the toned, you have the original promotional piece that comes here. And because of that, this one ended up selling for $163.50 with 11 total bits. There was a lot of activity here. People really did want this one. Uh, just a really fine and very acceptable 1990 Washington Quarter off-center. This one's off-center by about 50%. It's in great shape, and it's going to be a cog in any date set. So because of that, this one sold for a hefty price tag, $153.99. Um, you know, I've seen other examples, especially the same date that have sold for way less there's probably just something about this that the collector did love. And as a result, they hit that buy it now button. And, uh, you know, both the buyer and seller won in this transaction. All right. And this is one that I'm willing to bet a vast majority of you have A, never seen before, and B, probably forgot it even exists. But after this particular uh, coverage on this coin from this PCMR, you might want to pay closer attention. So it's a 2009 Lincoln set. Keep in mind, they did four different reverses to commemorate uh, the 100 year anniversary of the Lincoln set. All right, so this is what I believe the third one is. This is, uh, I guess, early presidency or whatever it shows them standing in front of uh, what looks to be. Uh, what is that? The Capitol building or, you know, what one of the, the buildings in D.C. But uh, what we have here actually is a really strong clash die. This is actually right on Lincoln's neck, right under his ear. And that's clashing from the windows from that building on the reverse. So when we look at this next photo, which was provided by the seller, this is actually an overlay of the reverse onto the obverse and you're going to see with those red arrows that that is indeed congruent with the, the windows from the building on there um so again this is just a, a phenomenal looking die clash uh i mean you know if you could take great pictures like this seller did you could cash in seriously on these and it's a coin that is highly ignored today this one right here ended up selling for $35.95. If you could sell these for between $30 and $40 a pop, that could equate to some massive gains. So keep an eye out on this one. It is huge. 1943S. I haven't seen this one in quite a while, but it is another cut and die break on a steely out of all things. Take a look at the base of Lincoln's bust right under the date. You're going to see that cut right there. Again, this is one I haven't seen in probably close to a year. It's It's been a while. Um, it does have the corresponding weakness on the reverse. The U and Unum is very, very weak there, which checks out. And uh, this one right here, again, cuts are, are the hottest rage right now. The pricing and uh, the value is so consistent across the board. This one sold for $52.55 with 12 bids. Uh, we also have this 2000P Roosevelt Dime. Now, again, Roosevelt Dime errors have been shooting up in value. It's been one of the biggest trending coins to get into Roosevelt Dimes because all the other coins are just way too expensive. But this is such a huge, large, centered, broad struck error, out of collar, of course. This one sold for $39.99. I've seen other ones sell here in the recent last couple weeks sell for well in excess of $100. So, uh, 
you know, maybe they've uh, throttled back on purchasing and paying a lot of money for these. But this is uh, a pretty incredible mint error. Here's a 2004D Washington quarter. This is the Wins Wisconsin, and it is one of the leaf variants. This is actually the low leaf type of this date. Um, and even still to this day, very popular. So this one has the extra engraved lower leaf that you see there, which was never part of the original design. And there's been a lot of speculation. How did it get added on there? And I would say it was probably intentionally made. So this one sold for $74.35. Again, it's a buy it now hit. Uh, here's a 1995, it looks like, $1 bill with a grossly misaligned overprint. You can see everything shifted to the right. Uh, very vivid inks, too, like the, uh, the ink wells were uh, replenished here with that green ink. Um, so strong, a very incredible error. We will look at the reverse. It looks good here as well. Um, and this one, ladies and gentlemen, sold for $98.67, and that's with 35 bids. And then finally, the last item for the PCMR for this weekend is this crazy fold-over error on a 1977A $5 bill. Uh, when you look at the left side of the note, you're going to find that there's printed reverse design on the front. You're like, how the heck did that happen? It's real simple. The corner of the sheet had folded in. All right. So it uh, it folded in. It printed over that fold. It, it was never, you know, unfolded before any of the printing, uh, which creates a pretty dramatic effect. And it was also trimmed and cut as well while it was still folded. So, you know, uh, it still managed to escape the BEP, which ended up in a bank strap. And some lucky someone ended up finding this bad boy. Uh, the note is in phenomenal shape. It's one of the more, more valuable paper money errors today. And it sold for $313 with 12 total bids. See, it's not even graded too. You know, why grade it when you know you can command the full potential of the market when you do come across something like this? All right, well, that comes to a conclusion for the weekend edition of the Pocket Change Market Report. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Information provided is not financial advice, so please do grade and collect responsibly. But that's going to go ahead and wrap things up. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. And if you're going to do some searching, hopefully this video gave you just the right amount of incentive to do so. There was a lot of great stuff out there. Go ahead and find your uh, your riches because there's plenty for everyone. Uh, thank you guys again. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope to see you next time on the Pocket Change Marker Report brought to you by Blue Ridge Silverhound. Take care and have a great week.